Testing. Is my audio okay? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to all of you watching live from MRS in Taiping and not forgetting all of our alumni who are watching from home. Welcome back. I hope you've had a nice lunch break and are now more energized for the final webinar in this year's ESPKG webinar day. My name is Hazwan bin Zanan Abidin and I'll be your moderator for this webinar entitled, You Are the Star of Your Interview. I'm currently a second year medical student in University College Dublin. I did my SPM in Master Typing in the year 2016, and I am very excited to be hosting this session today. This is a very special session as this webinar is presented as a duo from two really engaging speakers, colleagues, and mentor mentee pairs who work together at the Naga National Berhad. I am pleased to introduce Mr. Sharon Nizamat Noor, a team lead at HR Strategy and Transformation Center of Excellence, Naga National Berhad. Presenting along with him is engineer, professional technologist, Dr. Irani Mohammad Rawi, Head of Product Certification, TNB Labs, Sindhya Berhad. Mr. Sharul joined the Naga National in 1998 as an electrical engineer in the transmission division, now GRID. His vast experience includes engineering and design of high voltage equipment ranging from 66 kV up to 500 kV within the electrical power system and maintenance of the high voltage equipment. He is currently leading the Reimagining Culture team as a catalyst to enable organization-wide transformation of TNB. Meanwhile, Dr. Irani, who is also passionate about engineering, started her career as an electrical engineer in the same department in 2002, which involved overhead transmission lines and underground cables. In 2017, she was appointed head of product certification in TNB Labs, a subsidiary of TNB, where her role includes certification of products for electrical and non-electrical in TNB. She is also involved in quality audits and MVLV equipment testing. So have you guys gone for an interview? What are the things that you've been focusing on? Well, today, Mr. Sharo will share his expert views on this topic. Later, Dr. Iriani will share her very own experience attending and acing Yayasan Khazana's scholarship interview for her PhD studies back in 2013. As per previous sessions, the slide deck for this webinar is available through PDF attachments sent via Telegram. Please log in now to slido.com on your personal device and check with your respective class helpers for the event code. The event code for today is SPKG7. If you have a question for our speakers, please feel free to send it through the Ask tab at the bottom of the page. We will be answering questions at the end of the session. Now, Without any further delay, I present to you the duo speakers for this webinar, and please welcome Mr. Sharon Nizam and Dr. Iriani. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to all. Allow me to share this slide. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wa musalim Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yasid li amri wa halun uqdatan milisani yafqahu qawli First and foremost, uh, I would like to uh, express my gratitude and big thanks to uh, the team MRSM Taiping for the invitation uh, I will always look, look highly to those you guys in MRSM typing, uh, especially because it is a well-known thing that uh, typing MRSM typing alumni is always the, the cream of the cream. And uh, whenever I met the best people around in my workplace or at my university, uh, I, can, I can't run away from meeting some of your people. Uh, allow me to share with you my experience as an interviewer uh, 
I've been an interview interviewer for Tenaga National Berhad, uh, both during uh, for recruitment untuk orang masuk kerja dan juga for the scholars for uh, Yayasan Tenaga National. So uh, usually, uh, uh, I've met a lot of uh, potential candidates during the interview and. Also, as an interviewer, I have been trained on how to ask or how to get the best of response daripada all the participants. <coughs> so, hari ini title dia, Be the Star of Your Interview. Dan apa yang saya nak share hari ini is things that uh, that will help you uh, preparing for your interview response bila kena tanya during the interview. And it has to do with that star, S-T-A-R. So let us start off with some numbers. Uh, I have went through uh, numerous interviews, but I just kali buat interview, and usually, uh, typically, saya akan jumpa around 10 to 15 candidates per day. Uh, penat, uh, dia punya mental drain because at the same time you nak be present dan juga you nak otak jalan untuk generate question dan analisa response daripada uh, interviewee. Uh, so, interview biasanya akan jadi very intense dan kalau you as an interviewee manage to emerge as someone special, you akan lagi senang lekat dalam minda ataupun yang untuk jadi favorite kepada pemilihan. Number two, uh, recruiter biasanya akan tengok very quickly into your resume dan dia akan dan of course dia takkan tengok sekali lah dia akan tengok banyak banyak kali and from your resume normally we were trained to generate some question yang kita akan tanya masa interview so make sure your resume stand out and I think this area is covered by other speaker uh, sebelum sebelum ni and today we have a very limited time I wish you, I wish I can share a lot of things with you but uh, I am sharing the stage with Dr Iriani so we have to work within this limited time lah okay so saya nak in, one of the technique that uh, kami diperkenalkan atau kami diajar ialah behavioral based interview. Behavioral, behavioral based interview ni basically kita akan tanya soalan untuk dapatkan apa behavior, apa tingkah laku perangai yang dilakukan oleh calon semasa dia menjawab berdasarkan cerita yang dia dia uh, dia, dia ceritakan, dia jawab masa interview. So if do, by that behavior kita boleh kita boleh assess ataupun kita boleh nilai calon-calon tu ada certain-certain quality yang kita nak dalam interview tu John. Nanti saya akan elaborate uh, dengan lebih lanjut selepas ni. Jadi kebanyakan soalan-soalan behavioral based ni dia akan tanya mengenai pengalaman, mengenai cerita kisah-kisah uh, lampau yang past stories yang ataupun uh, generate daripada situasi-situasi bergantung kepada apa yang ada dalam resume dan juga apa yang dibincangkan masa interview. Jadi, uh, it's very important for you guys to be mindful uh, dan juga sentiasa fikir sebelum memberi respons dalam interview. So, macam saya cakap tadi, bila sebut STAR, sebenarnya ialah akronim kepada perkara-perkara yang dalam screen sekarang. ya. So, S is a situation. S stands for situation, T ialah task, A ialah action dan R ialah results. So dalam satu soalan interview, kami kami mahu calon-calon untuk bercerita mengenai apa yang dilakukan atau situasi ataupun pencapaian dan sebagainya mengikut format ini. Jadi kalau saya cerita Situation ialah situasi. So, masa bila kita uh, harapkan supaya calon akan cerita mengenai situasi yang berlaku. So, if you can see down there, describe the situation and task given to you clearly relating to the question. Jadi, daripada soalan tu uh, terus fikir situasi yang sesuai dan terus uh, bagi satu contoh, task yang tuan-tuan uh, atau puan-puan, cik-cik, uh, dapat ataupun diberi untuk menjalankan tugas ataupun tugasan yang diberilah. Situation may include the event, 
ataupun uh, event maksudnya sebarang acara projek ataupun challenge yang kita hadapilah di sama ada di maktab ataupun di persatuan ataupun di pertandingan dan sebagainya dan task indicate your responsibility and assignment for the situation apa responsibility apa tanggungjawab saya apa tugas yang diberi kepada, kepada saya berapa ramai dalam tim dan sebagainya itu bab situation dan task action action berkait dengan uh, apa yang berlaku uh, action uh, so uh, the interviewer will want you to explain what action or steps or procedures that you take to manage or resolve the situation how do you arrive to the decision and what did you consider when you take that specific action so dia lebih kepada action apa tindakan yang diambil apa langkah yang prosedur yang kita buat semasa berdepan dengan situasi tersebut mungkin situasi itu situasi yang sukar mungkin situasi itu situasi yang mengembirakan dan macam mana kita ambil kita buat keputusan macam mana kita decide okey yes kita nak pergi sini yes kita nak buat ini dan apa yang dalam apa yang dalam consideration masa kita buat uh, keputusan tu dan seterusnya ialah results result ialah very clear cut you dah ada situation you dah buat something apa yang berlaku uh, be specific dan result could be positive or negative it could be a success or it could be a failure jangan segan kalau cerita tu ialah cerita failure because tak semua uh, kita boleh belajar sesuatu daripada failure Jangan rasa I don't want to tell about the failure because it will embarrass me or it make me inferior or that kind of thing. Saya rasa the more genuine you are during the interview, the better you are and the higher the chance for you to to ace the interview. And these are normally some of the questions yang kita tanya. What happened untuk situation ni? Eh? Where and when did this take place? How did this come about? Siapa yang terlibat? Apa isu masa tu? and itu untuk situation dan bila kita sebut untuk task what is your responsibility uh, what, what do you do to to solve the problem oh, sorry do tu dah masuk action but responsibility is the task what is your role and what the other task mungkin saya ni mem, apa team member saja bukan team lead tapi you can use the the same situation and for action kita akan tanya soalan seperti what did you do first Uh, how the person or situation respond and what do you do next normally during interview kami ni suka probe dekat uh, sama ada situation atau action atau result untuk dapatkan lagi respon supaya star ni appear wholesome kita tak nak situation saja elaborate action tak ada tiba-tiba keluar result so star kita tak gemuk so cikgu saya ajar make sure bila kita buat Uh, interview ni make sure star tu S, T, A dengan R tu gemuk-gemuk belaka ok faham ya eh? uh, dan bila kita cerita pasal result of course kita nak tahu what was the end result and what was your manager or your leader or team member satis, uh, satisfied dia orang happy ke dia orang tak happy ke did you continue to handle the issue what happened next were you given new responsibilities Uh, and what can you different you do differently this is especially kalau the result is not in favor for example uh, failure ke uh, you boleh cerita what can you do differently kalau diberi task yang sama next time dan juga what are the lesson learned so um, within this short uh, session uh, these are the tips yang saya nak offer hari ini uh, mengenai star so make sure bila kita jawab interview Uh, cuba sedaya upaya untuk frame semua jawapan kita supaya meet uh, keempat-empat area ni situation, task, action dan results so saya nak bagi sample question yang biasanya kami tanya yang soalan-soalan ini ialah soalan-soalan behavioral based okay. contohnya tell me about a time when you perform well under enormous pressure so kalau contohnya di maktab probably You, you guys ada dapat assignment last minute assignment ataupun kena buat something uh, yang susah tapi uh, resources terhad dan sebagainya so boleh fikir apa situation itu apa task yang diberi uh, apa action yang dia buat dan apa results dia 
Then next question saya nak share hari ni contoh-contohnya yang lain what's been the toughest criticism you receive so far in your career ataupun in your study time and what do you do with it so notice tak soalan-soalan ni dia tak ada soalan yes or no tak ada soalan yang kalau you kalau-kalau ni soalan yang jenis-jenis kalau you diberi RM50,000 apa you nak buat itu soalan angan tak ada ni semua soalan based on your past Faham ya? Eh? Okay. The third question, explain a situation where you use data or logic to make a recommendation. So, soalan-soalan macam ni, kita lebih pada macam kami di uh, syarikat untuk rekrut orang, kita nak tengok sama ada orang tu ada tak skill-skill dan juga uh, kompetensi-kompetensi tertentu dan mungkin ini juga boleh digunakan uh, untuk kita assess calon-calon lepasan maktab dan sebagainya. Okay. Uh, next question. Tell me about a time you work with other departments to complete a project. So when we say other departments, kalau dari segi uh, student life, maybe we work with other teams, other homerooms, or other classes, or other schools to complete a project. So I believe you have so many, so much of experience to share. Tapi uh, saya galakkan uh, sentiasa fikir in that framework untuk kita dapat jawab sesuatu yang lebih complete dan With that, dia akan memudahkan lagi interviewer untuk assess calon-calon. And finally, one last question yang I want to share. Tell me about time you tell me about a time when you set and achieve a specific goal. So soalan-soalan ni very common. Soalan-soalan ni kita biasa jumpa hari-hari. Tapi kalau kita pandai frame dan juga pandai jawab soalan ni mengikut uh, star yang saya ceritakan sebentar tadi you akan uh, you akan appear to have a better chance to to score the interview dan juga it will show uh, what uh, your, the quality that you have within you lah so some tips yang saya nak share uh, we have two minutes to go number one, be prepared uh, it will help to highlight your skills and qualities you boleh choose certain words to say For example, kalau nak tengok leadership, you boleh cerita pasal visionary, you boleh cerita pasal business sense, you cerita pasal forward thinking dan sebagainya. You can choose that word to be included in your response. Secondly, be specific. Kalau ada soalan tu mengenai certain qualities yang diminta seperti tepat di masa, seperti selesaikan masalah within deadline, you will align stories tu kepada quality yang diminta. Okay. Next is uh, be quantitative. Uh, back up with numbers and fact. So, bila you cerita about success story, you boleh cerita berapa persen ataupun berapa hari you siap, kerja ni disiapkan dua hari lebih awal, 500 orang hadir ke event ni dan sebagainya. Bila you back up with numbers and fact, you punya argument ataupun your story akan dapat lagi solid, lagi strong dan lagi meyakinkan. Number four, be concise. Uh, boleh goreng tapi Make sure dia tak terlalu goreng, goreng banyak sangat, tak ada minyak, panas, angin juga. So, uh, keep your story short, sweet and targeted. Kalau uh, sebagai interviewer, kita mungkin nak dengar dua atau tiga soalan dan nak cari dua atau tiga star yang gemuk-gemuk supaya kita boleh cakap, yes, this is the candidate yang kita nak. And finally, be honest. Integrity is key. Jangan tipu, jangan make up stories. Uh, pasal we are trained to also unmask the persona yang datang interview ni uh, kalau banyak kali kena tanya soalan yang sama mungkin last-last nampak akan terciduk juga calon-calon uh, kalau dia tak honest so itu saja saya nak share untuk hari ini uh, selepas ini saya akan pass session kepada rakan baik saya, Dr. Iriani untuk ceritakan pengalaman dia macam mana dia ace the interview dengan Yayasan Kazana. Saya at the end, uh, I will be happy to entertain kalau ada orang yang nak share dia punya contoh star, boleh PM tepi kat saya, boleh hubungi uh, kawan apa senior yang membantu dekat maktab untuk contact saya dan saya akan bantu boleh guide Let us develop a good star for you bila you nak jawab soalan nanti. Okay, with that, uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Can I, can I share my screen now?
Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I want to start now. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sharul, for uh, an amazing presentation. Terima kasih. Saya akan teruskan for the remaining uh, 10 minutes uh, regarding kita punya apa tu? Uh, sharing. Uh, let me go straight to my slides. I think the YK interview. All right. So, uh, Bila kata acing the YK interview tu nak kata this is the perfect tip tu tidak lah this is the perfect tip but Alhamdulillah I went through the interview and somehow uh, I got in I was selected this was in 2014 uh, saya apply untuk Khazana interview untuk saya punya uh, beauty studies tahun which I started in 2013 so memang yes, I apply a bit late sebab pada asalnya saya plan okay I can do this alone tapi later I notice that ah uh, the the urine is quite costly so I do need help so I I went around searching and I found uh, Yayasan Khazana masa tu dia tengah offer and uh, they were asking for uh, uh, apa tu? Uh, paper di mana kita perlu tulis 10 muka surat uh, kita punya research uh, paper dan juga um, adakah uh, ia membawa macam mana dia boleh membawa kebaikan kepada uh, negara dan juga uh, mak makhluk lah orang kata for, for, for the betterment of a human being so uh, this is why I apply for Yasan Kazana and uh, it is very very uh, uh, berbaloi lah nak, nak uh, dikatakan. Okay, so a little bit of introduction about Yayasan Kazana Scholarship Pro Program before I started with my sharing. So Yayasan Kazana mm, menawarkan tiga program uh, scholarship. Yang pertamanya adalah of untuk uh, uh, student ataupun uh, apa candidates yang sedang men menjalani uh, program di uh, luar negara ataupun overseas university. Untuk program ni di panggil Khazana Global Scholarship. Okey, untuk kedua adalah local university di mana ia dipanggil Khazana Watan Scholarship. So, my, uh, saya punya adalah Watan lah because I study UPM. And the third one is the uh, Khazana Bestari Scholarship Program uh, di mana ia ditawarkan kepada uh, murid uh, sekolah menengah lah di mana rasanya tak ada berkaitan dengan adik-adik semua hari ini. Okey. Uh, apakah field of studies yang ditawarkan oleh Khazana? Okey, Khazana menawarkan tiga uh, program uh, untuk scholarship. Yang pertama adalah business, yang kedua adalah engineering dan yang ketiga adalah life sciences. Uh, untuk business uh, termasuk finance, accountancy, law, international business dan juga actuarial sciences. Untuk engineering uh, tidak terhad pada mechanical, electrical dan juga simple. It can be also chemical ataupun apa jenis engineering lah mungkin aeronautik, uh, whatever asalkan engineering. Untuk life sciences uh, contohnya adalah biotechnology. Okay, Kazana juga mengoffer uh, mengoffer uh, scholarship untuk disiplin ataupun program-program kos -program lain yang tidak tradisional, uh, tetapi dia adalah niche uh, macam uh, unik lah untuk area subjek tersebut. Walau bagaimanapun, a little bit of a disappointment bagi adik-adik yang nak menjalankan um, uh, medical ataupun medicine di mana uh, Kazana tidak lagi menawarkan scholarship untuk program medicine. Okay, tapi saya ada berita gembira juga kepada adik-adik uh, yang nak apply uh, untuk empat khusus ni di mana Kazana akan memberikan uh, 
preference ataupun special uh, preference kelebihan untuk yang uh, sedang menjalani khusus-khusus accounting, economics, finance, investment dan juga public policy. Kenapa? Uh, as we all know, Khazana uh, dia uh, manage asset, dia manage GLC, dia manage big big company. So they do need people yang mana yang uh, uh, power lah dalam bidang-bidang uh, accounting ekonomi ni eh. Okay so saya rasa yang tu agak clear di sini. Okay now we go straight to my YK interview experience. Like I said I went to the interview in 2014. It was quite some time ago, six years ago. Uh, for now bila saya semak uh, masih tidak ada perubahan pada format untuk interview dan ia masih dijalankan seperti mana yang saya jalani uh, apa tu enam tahun lepas lah. Okay. Uh, apakah stages of assessment? Stages of assessment terdapat empat untuk watan tetapi untuk global dia ada extra sikit, dia ada lima stage. Uh, di mana saya akan terangkan nanti. Untuk watan dan juga global lah kedua-duanya. Pertama sekali kita uh, calon maknanya saya dulu diberikan uh, uh, ujian online ability test. Ujian ni di, uh, dijalankan secara online di mana masa tu kita perlu berada di tempat yang orang kata uh, terasing, uh, jangan ada gangguan. There's, there's a very very limited time but a bunch of question. Banyak soalan dia dan pada saya sangat tough lah. Pada saya masa tu sangat tough. Dia ada calculation, dia ada finance, ada macam-macam lah IQ memang tak cukup tangan nak jawab memang tak sempat tapi Alhamdulillah uh, masa tu saya ingat memang okey memang aku tak dapat lah ni memang kopi lah memang rasa masa tu Allah Akbar kan tapi Alhamdulillah uh, beberapa hari lepas tu saya dapat uh, another link congratulating that I, I, I'm i through for the next round where they give me another link untuk uh, personality and profiling Personality ni dia agak tricky, saya rasa mungkin ada adik pun selalu buat tapi dia nak uji kita punya konsistensi. Sometimes uh, ada orang tu dia cakap saya introvert, tiba-tiba jawab extrovert pula. Ah. So bila you fail this thing, macam you tak konsisten, dia akan affect you punya result tu juga. Ah. So try to be as consistent and most importantly be yourself. Okay, so you kena apa tu you kena uh, jujur lah dalam menjawab soalan personality atau profiling test ni right uh, bukan nak minta kerja nak minta interview uh, nak minta scholarship tapi is equally important for me it's very very important okay thirdly lepas dah le uh, lulus or you gone through the profiling test means that your 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 profile is good then they will call you for an actual assessment Uh, bagi saya dulu, uh, the interview last from 9 am pagi dan saya habis interview tu rasa dalam 6 petang. Uh, so agak lama lah. Uh, it was very stressful. It was very, for me macam wah, masa dah habis macam lega sangat. And in fact, uh, lepas pukul 6 petang tu kita orang tak boleh rehat juga because we the result came out the same day. Dia kata if you don't receive a call before 9 pm the same day then you tak lepas. Ah then I memang tak, tak balik rumah masa tu interview dekat uh, hotel Chorus depan KLCC. So we were like I was staying in KLCC. I was like oh my god uh, dapat ke tak dapat ke tak kan. So uh, alhamdulillah they gave me a call. They say I, I pass for the third uh, uh, apa tu assessment. Um, then I went through for the, the final uh, stage which is competency based interview. The competency based interview ni adalah interview dengan uh, the managing director of YK sendiri uh, apa tu um, is a one to one interview lah. As a pun saya rasa still agak tough juga because they ask a, a lot of question uh, macam uh, boleh ke macam saya saya ni uh, I'm a mother of three. Masa tu anak saya yang bongsu baru umur 2 tahun. So dia question saya, dia kata you nak buat PhD dah lah part time. Dah lah you nak apa, kerja A to 5, you have a boss, you have a KPI tu bla 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 kan. So ada anak lagi kat rumah so macam mana, macam macam tak boleh je, macam tak logik lah. So dia akan main you punya psikologi tau. So you need to be really prepared with all these questions. Oh by the way, for the assessment center tadi, I'm sorry, I tak I terlupa nak, nak elaborate sikit. Untuk the assessment center, dia ada beberapa stages lah. Contohnya the first one tu uh, in groups. Dia akan groupkan you. Then dia akan bagi macam assignment. You a CEO of a company. You nak jual handphone ni macam mana you nak buat. 
uh, promotion macam berapa banyak yang you nak untung berapa lama bla 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 so masa tu you kena stand out uh, stand out macam tunjukkan you boleh lead uh, because why i will go next into that alright so untuk global kalau kalau adik-adik nak pergi overseas kan so you want to apply for the uh, YK uh, global uh, you kena pergi an extra step which is uh, trustee interviews trustee adalah khazana board of trustees Uh, which is Tan Sri Taj, Tan Sri Tajuddin, Datuk Syarif, Puan Rohaya Yusof dan juga Tuan Haji Adam Muhammad Said. You really need to know all these important people uh, because they will be the one uh, interview you nanti. Okay, so these are the stages of assessment. Uh, next is the criteria. Apa yang Kazana nak tengok daripada you? Apa yang dia nak daripada you kan? So uh, firstly is the academic prowess. Of course, semua sponsor pun nak tengok student yang uh, cemerlang kan? Yang hebat, yang power and of course Mara smart kot. Takkan tak cemerlang kan? Okay, so I don't think you have problem with this one. So everyone is amazing on this academic prowess. Secondly, extracurricular. Apa yang hebatnya you ni, apa yang bagusnya you ni. You ada main bola jaring ke, main pingpong ke, wakil sekolah ke, wakil negara ke. Ataupun you swimming ke, ataupun boy scout ke, whatever lah kan. Ada ke boy scout. <laughs> okay, so uh, these are your extra curricular. Thirdly is the social community works. Adakah you terlibat dengan CSR? Pergi tolong rumah orang tua ke? Pergi selamatkan penyu ke? Kan? So all these things, the community works that you are involved. The more you are involved. Lebih stand out sebab because Kazana ni my very own experience Dia tak end there tau macam lepas even you habis Sekolah you habis belajar pun dia akan still cari you macam I am still actively with them now because um, for now kita tengah buat macam mentorship program Kita akan pick student-student uh, yang belum grad ni then uh, one to one so saya become mentor to someone uh, Same goes to other uh, alumni so The, the the relationship tu memang berpanjangan, berterusan uh, dengan YK ni. Memang dia suka nak tengok macam mana kita give back to the community which is very very important. Okay now last but not least the leadership competencies. Now I told you before about the assessment center. Masa ni lah you nak ke depan, you nak tunjukkan yang you ni, uh, you have the leader in you. So macam bila you, you bagi group assignment, adakah you ni uh, duduk belakang, tu orang present, tak nak saya malu lah, bla 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 lah. So, susah lah sikit tapi janganlah over sangat. Ha, sometimes dia menyampah juga tengok kan. So, um, untuk leadership competencies ni, cuba untuk ke depan, uh, be professional. Okay, so I think that's the fourth criteria. Then, uh, before I end my presentation, saya nak jemput adik-adik atau kawan-kawan semualah yang menonton untuk visit my very own blog gadisletric.com atau gadisletric.wordpress.com I do share a lot of information di uh, apa tu di uh, blog saya lah insyaAllah sebab masa pun sangat pendek kan and please uh, have a visit, uh, drop down your comments I would love to hear from you, it's really my apa tu, uh, saya suka nak tengok uh, whether or not or may maybe you have another uh, interesting topic that uh, you want to share, okay? Uh, so please do visit uh, the, the the blog, the website, is the, the link is down here. So, um, yeah, I think that would be all from me. Uh, I think, uh, can I give back to Hazwan? Yes, uh, thank you Dr. Irani for the very interesting and insightful sharing. Uh, so now, uh, we will go uh, about our Q&A session. So uh, these questions can be answered by either of you, either Mr. Sharul or Dr. Irani. Okay, so the most popular question that we have here is that if we take a long time to answer the questions given by the interviewer, will that affect our chance to get accepted? Uh, I would like to respond to this question. Uh, macam ni lah. For every candidate, you ada dalam probably paling lama setengah jam for one interview kan. So kalau you ambil masa, if you take so long in answering one question, we may be able to assess only one one or two qualities that can be derived from that question. Sedangkan all together within that interview, probably interviewer wants to assess you out of uh, probably six qualities. Uh, don't spend too much 
uh, pasal it will it will jeop uh, it will risk or it will jeopardize the chance for you to showcase another four qualities for example uh, that is i think that spot on this is what i would like to reply lah uh, jangan ambil masa yang terlalu lama it is good that if you can pre plan atau practice uh, the response all right thank you mr shahrul so another question that's popular is how to know whether we are introvert or extrovert because for me it depends on the people that i interact with oh, you want me to answer that or oh, jarul again take it on take it on irani sharul sharul is very expert in this thing actually so uh, you want to know how uh, i'm a very uh, quant, uh, apa tu quantitative quantitative i'm a very quantitative person so If you ask me, uh, macam mana nak tahu, saya cakap buat test je. There's so many online uh, test kan sebab. Uh, tapi dari segi apa tu, generalnya kalau you introvert, you memerap je. Kalau hujung minggu tu, you nak suka nak pergi party ke ataupun you nak baca buku duduk kat rumah, that will be introvert kan. As simple as that. Tapi kalau you extrovert, you okay. Uh, as simple as, if you go to... Uh, 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 dinner, contoh, dinner party where you don't know many people. Adakah you be intend to do in a corner with friends that you already know and that would be introvert. Tapi kalau you, hi, hi, how are you? Hi, husband. What's your name? Oh, you dari mana? Ah, uh, That's definitely extrovert. Am I right, Cheryl? Is it? Yes, uh, extroverted, uh, extrovert versus introvert. Sekarang even dah ada ambivert. <laughs> a, a hybrid between those two. Uh, you can always go and check your personality traits online. Ada banyak test method dekat sana. But it is not always to say that uh, I ada satu macam disclaimer lah. Orang takkan selalu cakap job ni untuk extrovert saja, Job ni untuk introvert saja. I've known so many people yang introvert tapi jadi pembaca berita. Jadi MC, jadi host. I ada tahu orang yang extrovert tapi bila bekerja dia boleh jadi very secretive which is the trait of orang yang introvert. So don't worry about it, your trait will change from time to time. Uh, tapi I, of course ada yang dominant lah. So I would always encourage you guys to know your style, your traits and you can always uh, do it online lah. Uh, if, right. if I can add a little more on that one, I, I do really agree so much when uh, uh, Sharul said uh, it will change. So I remember last time when I did the test, I'm always, always extrovert. But recently, bila umur dah empat siri ni, balik-balik dapat introvert. Balik-balik dapat introvert. So so I, I do really agree with what you're saying. Okay, uh, thank you for the answers. So another question is, uh, ada yang tanya, kalau result saya turun naik, dia uh, affect ke the decision of the interviewers? Okay, I would like to take up that question. Hmm, result turun naik ni common sebenarnya. It's just that zaman sekarang is not common. Pasal nah sekarang ni excellence is the new average. Itu ayat my wife dia cakap. Sekarang kalau tak straight A tak boleh dapat scholarship. Sebenarnya result saya pernah tengok untuk employment untuk orang yang kerja result degree dia pointer dia naik turun. Ah uh, ikut ikut be one of the scenario ataupun ikut be one of the star yang you boleh generate out of that situation. You boleh cerita what happen during your punya result drop tu. Are you are you having a health problem, a financial problem, uh, whatsoever relationship problem ke and then how do you overcome that scenario? That could not help you imp, uh, apa repair grade yang dah rosak tu tapi uh, it will show your resilience ataupun how you pick up from from that down valley tu and how you re-emerge and become a new you. So pada saya nothing wrong as long as you know how to put it contextually positive so that you can always put it uh, as a response to your answer. Thank you. So another one I think uh, is interesting is how do we react when we do not know how to answer the question given by the interviewers uh, let me ambil sikit untuk ni no, you uh, can take all you have all the experience you can uh, take all. <laughs> kadang-kadang memang kita terkedulah 
uh, especially you tiba-tiba blank, tiba-tiba uh, you you have come prepared, maybe you're too nervous, suddenly you become blank. What can you do better is probably number one, be truthful, cakap tu terang. Uh, can I spend? Uh, can you give me a minute for me to think about the answer? Uh, minta masa untuk jawab is a very fair thing to do in the interview and in fact it will show a quality whereby you are a very thoughtful person you tak terburu-buru you tak hastily ataupun cepat-cepat nak jawab tak tak glojo uh, and you wanted to be calm and collected before you come up with the answer minta masa is number one number two is uh, nothing wrong with being frank cakap terang i'm very nervous uh, i don't have the answer to that Uh, probably uh, can you rephrase the question dan sebagainya uh, it's about situational management how do you manage yourself uh, during that time could also uh, influence the outcome of the interview tapi nak cakap the point yang kalau kita blank masa interview dan tak tahu nak jawab benda tu sangat common berlaku pada mana-mana interview and it's kind of like normal jangan Cumanya, the best person is the one who can overcome it very quickly lah. All the best. Uh, maybe okay. I tambah sikit, uh, Hazwan, a little bit. Uh, is my little experience uh, bila saya interview uh, yeah, students. Eh, no, sorry. Uh, this is not student interview. Ini masa saya interview uh, staff lah untuk datang kerja dengan uh, our department. So, it will become very uh, obvious bila you dah start uh, orang kata menipu lah bukan menipu lah macam tak tujuh bila jawab goreng, dia goreng. macam yes ha goreng so dia macam makin melalut makin melalut so you better don't do not try if you don't know you don't know ah uh, because uh, be, be 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 yourself lah macam whatever tips that you I, I truly truly really yeah this one okay thank you Uh, so we still have uh, time for a few more questions. I try to ask questions that are general so that uh, it applies to everyone. Um, okay, so they ask, can they talk about, okay, so be, because we, we are in a very uh, weird situation with the COVID pandemic and all, so can they talk about events that they plan to execute but didn't because of covid during the interview when when talking about experiences in school yes sangat boleh uh, in fact early, uh, masa ramadan i was uh, i was invited as a interview panel for yes and one of on one of the question that i usually ask my frequently asked question is what do you do during covid Pasal kita tak nak kandidat yang duduk rumah, tidur, tak buat apa-apa. Some of them are very visionary, very in it, full of initiative. They do other things. Ada yang belajar coding online, ada yang belajar streaming online, ada yang buat fundraising and what not. Oh, crazy-crazy things. Cumanya, you boleh cerita juga uh, apa yang berlaku during COVID and you can cerita to the extent to your plan tu. Banyak money you dah plan and what do you Uh, bila COVID, of course, banyak benda tergendala. Uh, we would like to know what's next. What is your plan B, plan C and plan D dan sebagainya lah. It should not stop there. Uh, because kalau stop there, nampak macam kita terus redor je lah. Uh, you, you just accept it as it is and nothing nothing happen. So, it looks lack on proactivity. So, that's what I can help if you uh, given a question on Uh, ataupun you plan to answer something that you plan to do during COVID tapi uh, tergendala lah. Alright. Okay, for the next one is untuk dapat sesuatu scholarship, adakah betul-betul bergantung kepada extra curricular activities ataupun performance masa interview tu sendiri? Uh, maybe maybe I, I, I start dulu. Uh, okay, like As per my presentation tadi kan, uh, macam Kazana itself, dia ada beberapa kriteria lah. So it's not curricular activity 100%. First one is, kalau you ingat lagi, my slide tadi is the academic prowess. Okay, itu yang nombor satu. Nombor dua adalah extracurricular dan social uh, uh, 
responsibility, I mean community involvement. And then your leadership. So benda ni is equally important. So kalau you dah macam masuk segala program pun, tapi when it comes to leadership, you menyowok je kat belakang, then it will be pointless lah. So you need to balance all these four points lah, which I think maybe uh, Sharon want to add more. Do you agree? Yeah. I think uh, macam saya cakap tadi, bila pergi Yayasan Tenaga punya interview, semua orang straight A, straight A plus lagi. Well, basically academic, there's nothing to look at dah. So what's, do we, what, what's next do we look at for? Kita akan tengok you punya academic, uh, you punya core curriculum, what do you do at your matab. Uh, probably while waiting for your interview, lepas sekolah, you can do any other things. Uh, you you go and work part time ke those are experiences dan tak uh, dan kadang-kadang orang punya uh, take is not just about uh, academic excellence depends on the situation yang dia nak lah uh, kadang-kadang uh, biasanya employer buat interview walaupun untuk scholarship dia punya end game dia nak ambil you untuk jadi staff for example so kita nak juga ada ciri-ciri dia ni lasak ke dia ni boleh kerja berpasukan ke all these qualities yang you nak cari ni sebenarnya ada dalam company tu punya website ataupun company tu punya nilai-nilai for example if they want in people for integrity they want people for to yang ada collaborate collaboration people yang uh, professional so that kind of value you boleh always link back and that is why i cakap bila buat star you boleh always relate your experience to meet the the values tu Alright. Okay. Can I add uh, a little bit on that one, Hazwan? Sikit. Yes, okay, yes. so I, I wish to add on this one because I think it's very, very important. Because why? Uh, bila saya attend interview myself dan juga bila saya uh, conduct interview, I notice calon-calon uh, yang tak buat homework memang akan sangat obvious. Contohnya, macam uh, saya pernah conduct interview untuk um, calon yang nak jadi engineer lah di, di department saya lah, di TMB Research. They don't even know uh, TMB Research ni anak cari kat TMB. And dia ask, dia tanya kita balik, eh uh, macam mana? So I was like, how can you not know about the company that you're about to join? So please number one, do your homework visit the website. Nombor satu, visit the website. Contoh kalau you nak scholarship Kazana, you need to know Kazana ni buat apa sebenarnya. Ah, uh, kan? So, benda ni adalah sangat penting. Uh, please um, do your homework before going to any interview. Dia bukan tangkap, buat, tang, pukul rata, everything semua sama. So, kalau you nak pergi interview Kazana, lain uh, target dia. And then, kalau nak pergi Petronas, maybe you kena baca a little bit about oil and gas ke apa semua. I'm not sure. But really, you have to do your homework. Because it shows Memang it shows really, really clearly. Kalau you tak buat your homework, you know nothing about uh, the, the apa, sponsor ataupun company yang you nak join tu, then you, dia akan jadi macam uh, obvious lah. Uh, so, that's my... <laughs> I, nak, I nak tambah sikit lagi. Uh, uh, what Nini said is very true. Ibaratnya kita nak datang rumah orang, you must, <laughs> you kena tahu tuan rumah tu lah. Jangan jangan serkat jarang, jangan main rush saja bahaya tu. Oh. Uh, uh, do some homework. Zaman dulu resources are very limited. Zaman sekarang everything in the internet. Uh, do read about the latest news. Uh, kadang-kadang soalan-soalan yang tengok, What, apa yang you last baca pasal syarikat kami? So kalau tak tahu, hmm, susahlah chance nak dapat uh, peluang untuk dan satu lagi saya nak beritahu, walaupun kita cerita pada preparation sebagai uh, calon temu duga, interviewee, kadang-kadang ada juga part yang interviewer punya hal. So benda-benda ni is a personal, kita tak boleh nak ubah orang tu lah. Uh, berdoa lah supaya dapat penemu duga yang baik. Kadang-kadang penemu duga ni pun ada hal dia juga. Kadang-kadang macam saya baca ada yang tanya kalau muka bengis nak buat macam mana. That, that thing kita tak boleh nak elak lah kan. Uh, B, you your best saja. Uh, saya ingat uh, bos saya punya tagline, dia punya ni, do your best, Allah will do the rest. Yeah. Jangan risau, dan niat yang betul-betul, uh, penemu duga tu uh, cool ke, penemu duga tu provoke kita ke, itu belakang kira lah. Kadang-kadang, yelah Allah ada adalah cara yang nak temukan kita dengan orang supaya kita belajar something. Okay.
Okay, so I think I think this is the last question. One more question. Um, is it right for us to apologize for our, for example, bad English or our weaknesses in the interview? Kalau jawab dulu, I have my answer. Ah. <laughs> uh, Uh, we should be proud tau Kita patut bangga orang Malaysia We speak English our second language Mak Saleh tak ada second language tau <laughs> Mak Saleh tak tahu cakap bahasa Melayu So we should be proud that we, we Saya pernah luluskan orang interview Walaupun English dia broken ke laut Pasal dia cuba attempt Normally during interview Kita akan selalu tanya Kita akan selalu bagi syarat yang The first uh, question you kena jawab in English The self introduction The rest you boleh cakap bahasa Melayu balik. Tapi this guy try all the way until the last question to speak in English. And I I admire dia punya apa semangat dia tu. And of course on top of it he's a right candidate lah. Bukannya pasal dia punya semangat tu yang kita terima dia. Dia ada ada kriteria lah. But English is not uh, what do we say? It's not the hook the big factor lah sebenarnya. Boleh minta maaf tapi jangan minta maaf banyak kali. Nanti pengemuduga meluat. <laughs> Ataupun you rasa very alah sudahlah tu tak payahlah minta maaf lagi. Sorry ya cik, sorry ya cik. Ah saya tak pandai English. Ah sorry my English is bad. Banyak-banyak kali orang nak menyampah. So kita tak kita takut dia emotionally driven pula dan dia nak end the interview supaya you belah daripada bilik tu. Which is not fair. Okay. Okay. Alright, Charul ni sebenarnya uh, uh, mentor saya tau. He he's my very first mentor. He's my first ibu, my first boss, whatever lah kan. In 2003 when I joined TNB, so I know I do have some link kepala tak air dengan dia. So whatever dia jawab tadi is exactly what I want to answer. Tapi tak apa lah. Saya tambah juga sikit lagi. Uh, yes, I attended. I I do. I pernah conduct interview yang calon ni memang tak kerti cakap English. Tapi sampai awal sampai ke sudah. Minta uh, maaf lah cik. Minta maaf lah. Eh menyampahnya aku. Uh, ha. Ya Allah ya Tuhan. So I kata you need to limit. Yes it's okay. You can apologize. Tetapi uh, tidak sampai tahap menyampah dan meluat. Tolonglah bila. Ha uh, macam tu tau. So um, yes uh, there is a limit. You you can apologize but okay one important note. Uh, saya pernah interview calon dengan bos-bos saya masa tu GM, GM semua. Uh, she answered as uh, she asked the question in English. But this person dia cakap uh, saya minta maaf saya tak pandai cakap English. Boleh saya jawab dalam bahasa dia cakap macam tu. Lepas tu my GM got so pissed off they said no. I ask in English, you answer in English. And then automatically, dia tak dapat that job tau. So, it's, it's quite, uh, apa tu, uh, pada saya agak bahaya juga. Boleh, you boleh minta maaf. Tapi, sometimes it will affect juga dalam result. Dalam apa, your interview performance tu lah. So, macam tadi Syaru share, which I really agree, at least you try. At least you try. Because uh, masa tu bos saya lepas habis interview tu, dia cepat-cepat nak suruh uh, that candidate keluar. Dia kata, he could have tried. He could have tried. I clearly ask in English. He should answer in English. Uh, so, ini salah satu uh, pengalaman yang yang saya lalui which saya pun terkedu juga. Mungkin saya ni agak lembut hati sikit masa tu macam, okey lah bagi can lah kan. Tapi when... Malamnya, maybe dia tak semayang hajat lapan rakaat tu malam tu Dia dapat macam interviewer macam bos saya, no Dia cakap dengan garangnya, no I answer you in English, you have to jawab in English ha. So then, bad luck lah uh, So yeah, uh, be very, uh, orang kata um, uh, Apa tu lah, uh, sedar dengan keadaan sekeliling And then, bila orang tanya English, you jawab lah dalam English Lepas tu Uh, kalau pun teguk ke laut ke, just try. It's not that I as don't know, you don't know. Ah, takkanlah sampai teguk segitu kan. So, you 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 can try. You know, like if it goes really, really bad, then uh, maybe you can step back and say, uh, saya saya rasa boleh tak saya sambung dalam ah. Macam uh, do it very, very nicely and uh, in, in the best way lah. So, yeah, that's from my experience. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rani and Mr. Sharu. So, sadly, uh, that has to be our last question. Uh, okay. So, now I am sharing uh, with the students a QR code 
for the feedback form for this session. So I hope everyone uh, will be able to fill in the feedback form and share your thoughts about what you think about this webinar. Before I end this session, I would like to thank Mr. Sharul and uh, Dr. Iriani for sharing their wisdom and experience with us. I learned a lot today as well. Uh, it will be very, very useful for me in my future interviews. As, as, as everyone else. Thank you, Hazwan, for being such a great moderator today. Thank you so much. He deserves uh, a round you. of applause. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, there were a lot of questions in Slido that were very specific. Um, Adanya Basa Zoology, Engineering, uh, Education. So I don't think it was appropriate for me to, to ask them within this forum, but I will share the questions with Mr. Sharo and Dr. Iriani in case they have any specialized replies. Uh, yeah, we we, we would be happy question. to answer, inshallah. For me, for me, yeah. senang je. Just visit my blog, put your comments. I'm more than happy to answer anytime. I I visit my blog every day, obviously. So if you have a question, just uh drop your comments there. Inshallah, saya akan cuba reply lah. Bukan nak promote, tapi promote je lah. <laughs> <laughs> Penat tulis blog kan? Kalau tak ada orang visit, betul tak? <laughs> get some traffic. Get some traffic. Yes. Okay, so I think that is all. Um, we are ending right on schedule. So uh, thank yeah. you everyone for attending. All Salam. the best, MRSM. Bye. All the best. Yeah, <laughs>